you know, having a chance to uh, go back and kind of get into a fall camp mode for this week uh, has been really good for a lot of players. Um, just working on fundamentals, really back to the basics. Uh, you know, just in, in, in the run game offensively, uh, conceptually in the throw game, getting a chance to rep a, um, a lot of different groups, uh, a lot of players. So uh, it's been really good from the offensive standpoint. Uh, defensively, just kind of going back and getting back to the basics, uh, striking blockers up front, um, really on all three levels, uh, block protection, being able to get off blocks, um, you know, going back in, uh, in our pattern match uh, from a secondary standpoint, linebackers being able to go back to the basics and work fundamentals, you know, and in special teams just taking, um, you know, whether it's one or two – two uh, units a week uh, or two units a day uh, twice a week here with, you know, punt and punt return, just going back to fundamentals, uh, giving guys that didn't really have an opportunity to, to win a job and on those teams uh, early on in the season, getting a chance to rep a lot of different guys uh, has been good. Our players have worked really hard in the first two days of practice. We've got two more this week, and then we'll give them Friday and Saturday off. Uh, before we get ready for Arkansas. So uh, I really like the attitude of our team. I think um, when, you, when you look at where we're at right now, obviously uh, everybody in our program is disappointed. Uh, but I think the most important thing at this point is, is to figuring out, number one, what are we, what are we doing pretty good right now? Um, and, and two, um, what are we not? And, and how do we fix that? So uh, it's been a been a really good couple of days here to go back to get to these fundamentals and figure out exactly where it's at and how do we go back and get it fixed. So, uh, any questions? Questions will start with Jimmy Himes, then we'll go to Nicholas Hill. Jimmy, you had mentioned after the Alabama game that you were closing the gap, and I wonder if you were referring to perhaps uh, the culture of the program or maybe you're recruiting, uh, maybe you're playing the line of scrimmage. Well, the most important thing is on the scoreboard, which is not showed up, right? So that, that's, that's the most important thing, and it hadn't showed up there. Um, but, you know, to me, I was, I was very familiar with that program, right? And uh, when I got here, um, I knew exactly what the difference was uh, within the two programs. And uh, I would say three years later, uh, I'm still pretty familiar with that one, and, and I know where this program kind of is right now. The thing that we've got to do as a program is it's got to show up on game day, uh, and, it, and it didn't this past Saturday. Um, so, and that's the most important thing. So, um, you know, that's something that we've got to continue to work on to help fix, um, and our guys are doing that. Yeah. Well, since now you probably have a bye week, um, are you spending more intensive time with the defensive line this week? Uh, can you repeat the question? Oh, uh, yes, Coach. Uh, since you finally have a bye week and have some time to really go back to the basics, especially with the defensive line, just, you know, how, are you, uh, you know, individually spending more time on that unit, you know, considering that you know, you're essentially their, their coaching moment? Right, yeah, so um, I, I really have. I've really kind of dove into the defensive line. To me, we've always been kind of an attacking style defense, um, and we hadn't really been playing that way. Uh, you you, you kind of got to play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Uh, if you're going to be able to stop the runs and create negative plays and affect the quarterback, and uh, we've really got to improve in that area, and I think it goes back to just fundamentally uh, – you know, being more of an attacking style. So, uh, but we've got lots of areas on defense that we've got to improve on. Um, and, you know, we have a plan to do that and our, our players are trying to work hard to, to get it fixed. Austin Price and David Dubbin. Coach, you talked to Saturday about being kind of, you know, disappointed in the play of the secondary over the last few weeks. Are there some guys during this bye week that have a chance to kind of either get corrected or guys that haven't been playing 
um, that has caught your eye through the first couple of days of practice to think that maybe they can come on for this uh, back half of the season? Well, you know, I have a lot of confidence in the guys that play in our secondary. Um, you know, they, they've, they've played a lot of football around here and played some, some really good football at times. Uh, you know, I think, you know, one of the big things is, is it's pretty evident for, for these guys uh, how important practice is. Um, and unfortunately for a lot of those guys, uh, we kind of got hit pretty hard in that area during fall camp. Um, and, you know, so when you miss, when you miss practice time there, uh, you've got to be really sharp in preparation. Um, and I think moving forward, you know, our, our, our guys will, they'll continue to improve back there uh, with their communication. You know, one thing back there is very similar to the old line. You, we're usually playing with five defensive backs. Um, and very seldom over the last couple of years have we had uh, situations to where we've had busted coverages or, or left people open or not played very good technique. Um, and we've had much more of that this year. Uh, and we, we've got we've to eliminate that because the defensive backs really place the limitations on your defense. Um, and, you know, again, I have a lot of confidence in these guys. They're working hard. Uh, we're creating depth back there. Uh, and, and there is some younger guys. We've moved a few guys around. I, just an example, like Keyshawn Lawrence. So, um, you know, he's a guy that we recruited in here to play corner. Uh, so, all during the summer when we had the walkthroughs, he, he played corner. Um, and as we practiced a couple of days, you know, he looked really good. And, you know, but we didn't think maybe he was going to be in front of Alante or Bryce. Um, but we thought, hey, this is a guy that we want to find a way to get him on the field. So we're thinking maybe in our six defensive back package, you know, move the kid to safety and give him a chance to be a starter in our six defensive back package. So he, he practices on defense, or safety for probably seven or eight practices. And then uh, we lose all of our corners to quarantine. Um, and to be able to practice just to have numbers, you know, we move him back to corner. Um, so – that's a particular situation that's probably wasn't fair to him and it's probably delayed his development as a defensive player. Uh, but we've just left him at corner um, and he's done really well uh, this week. We're going to play him a little bit at star in this open week just to see uh, from a conceptual standpoint how he does there because he's a guy that continues to kind of show up. Um, and, you know, he's one of the guys to Marion McDonald's, another guy that – uh, obviously didn't practice any until two weeks ago. Uh, so this is a this is a really good week for him. Um, just to go back and, and go back to, you know, the, the first four days of fall camp, how we put in, put in everything from middle field coverage to split safety coverage to man-to-man -to, -man to fire zones to, to pressures with trap and things like that, just to kind of go back and get a foundation for him. So there's a lot of guys that kind of fall into that. David Owen. Uh, Jeremy, two questions. One, you mentioned on the call just now that, that you guys learned some lessons in July uh, that you might be able to apply to the bye week. What were some of those lessons? And two, when you mentioned that you guys are having some of those busts in the secondary, well, what's your guess for why those are happening this year? They really haven't happened much for you guys. Like this. Yeah. Um, well, just going back to the COVID lessons, I think the big thing is is it's very unpredictable, right? So you may, you may feel like you're doing everything that – the right way as far as the mask and you know but you can't assume that somebody that's kind of not in the testing procedure uh, that they they don't have the virus you know it's better off to assume if they're not in their testing protocol that they do have the virus and you and you need to stay away you know so uh, which is tough um, you know uh, my, my family's not in the testing protocol right so I, I, I get it you know when a lot of these guys they see uh, whether it's their, their family members, a girlfriend, or uh, grandparents, whatever it is, right, friends. So uh, just understanding that these guys have worked really hard to try to get the opportunity to be able to play. Uh, so we did learn some lessons from that. As far as the <clears throat> making, you know, mistakes in the secondary, 
Um, it's really kind of uncharacteristic for this group of guys uh, because they've all played a lot of ball together. Um, but one thing that has happened, you know, Alante has kind of been in and out of the lineup because of his hamstring since fall camp. Bryce, you know, uh, he missed the Missouri game. He's really he's playing with a torn pec right now um, and something that's kind of healing on its own. So he's missed some practice time. Schamberger's missed. Jalen McCullough, you know, was out. They just kind of been in and out. And as a group, you know, when people go in motion, when they shift, when they change, when they get in stacks, when they get in bunches, there's lots of communication. You know, our, our you know, we're, we're not very vanilla uh, in the secondary. We play a lot of different coverages and try to man match a lot of things and, and create issues for the quarterback. But to be able to do that, uh, you've got to be really good communicators and all five people have got to be on the same page. And unfortunately, we've had some of those deals to where we've not. And we've got to eliminate that and make the other team earn it. Vince Ferrari. Two things. One, when you went back and evaluated the team for Alabama, you guys ran the ball an awful lot on third and five and greater. What do you attribute that to? General philosophy, opponent, situation, things like that. And then the second thing is with Chandler and Gray being such good offensive players for you, uh, are you guys looking at maybe trying to have both of them on the field at the same time as a threat? Right. So, well, if you watch the first four games of Alabama, they, they gave up a lot of runs on third down uh, with people playing fast. And, um, you know, <clears throat> probably one of the reasons is <clears throat> they're very similar to us, Georgia, Florida, um, South Carolina, kind of in the same defensive family is when it gets third down, they want to put six defensive backs on the field. Uh, when it comes to protections, you get exotic looks or whatever. So, um, you know, over the first four games, they, they gave up a lot of runs on third down, uh, particularly the last couple of weeks. So, something that we thought that we, we possibly could do, there was a couple of times that, you know, we were probably in four down territory. Uh, so, you're trying to minimize, you know, go from fourth and seven, excuse me, third and seven to fourth and two or three. Um, but that was, that was really the philosophy behind it. And then uh, Gray and Chandler together uh, on the field. Right. So, um, you know, we, we do have some packages to do that. Um, and probably as the season goes, uh, that we'll probably see more of that. Uh, but just not had an opportunity to do it yet. Coach, when you look at and evaluate things through five games, what's your evaluation of your defense's tackling ability? What do you think that needs to improve, or how does that need to improve? Um, and then secondly, you, you've had your hands on the ball a few times in the secondary, but have not been able to complete the interception. How, how do you improve that, that part in the back half of the season? You know, to me, just looking the first five games defense, uh, the thing that sticks out the most is, is number one, the mistakes that we've made. Um, you know, the first thing you want to be able to do defensively is, is you want to be sound uh, and you want to make the other team earn it. Uh, if you make the other team earn it, you got a shot. Now, how do you do that? You keep edges on the defense. Uh, you don't let the ball run around the defense. Uh, whether it's uh, a run play or a perimeter throw play. Uh, you, don't, you don't give up explosive plays down the field. Um, you know, you make them throw the ball in front of you with tight coverage. Then you become a good ta – you, you got to be a good tackling team so there's no yards after contact. Um, I think Saturday we missed 23 tackles. I think Alabama got 97 yards after contact, um, which you can't have. The next thing is on third down, you've got to get off the field. And we've been very poor on third down, um, which is not kind of who we've been in the past. Uh, so we've, we've obviously got to address those issues. Uh, so, and then, and then you just said it, uh, creating turnovers. You know, having an opportunity that when the play's there to be made is, is making the play um, and finishing on the ball, whether it's um, – knocking a ball off somebody or or the ball's in the air you get your hands on it and and finishing it off so we've got to be more op opportunistic on defense 
David Wallace and William Todd. Jerry, can you update the status on how Wanya Morris is, is coming along? Uh, was he ready to go last weekend? And then also, second part to that, how do you fear Jameer Johnson did on Saturday against Alabama? You know, Wanya um, practiced a little bit on Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, and, and, and he probably could have played on Saturday. Would he have been 100%? Probably not. He was a couple of days away. He has participated this week in practice, and and looks pretty good. Uh, he's gaining confidence. You know, Jameer has not, you know, he got hurt in the South Carolina game, didn't practice against Missouri, tried to go, tried to practice against Georgia. It was kind of a game time deal there. Wasn't ready to go. And then um, Kentucky still just uh, wasn't quite there. Um, I thought as we, we practiced a week of Alabama, he gained confidence. You think about it as an old lineman. If you're not practicing for three weeks, you you know you get a little rusty. Um, and I thought he gained confidence. And I thought particularly at both offensive tackles, uh, we played better last week. Jeremy, you mentioned in your opening statement this is a good time to evaluate what you're doing well, what you're not doing well. You, you've touched on some of those things that you don't feel like you're doing well. But I was wondering in that evaluation, what stood out about you know, what, what things do you think you are doing well with this team? Yeah, I feel like uh, offensively, um, you know, just in the probably three run concepts, uh, you know, running inside zone and, and some RPOs that, we, that we've ran off of it. That's, that's a couple of things we've done well. I, we call them chop routes. Uh, we hit Jalen uh, Hyde on a couple of them Saturday. We've had uh, earlier in the year we hit uh, Brandon Johnson on a few of them. Um, feel like that standpoint has been much improved. Uh, defensively, um, for the most part, I've been pretty pleased with the inside linebackers. Uh, not, not as much this past week. I felt like we were um, out of place a little bit on some runs, uh, but I felt like we played better at that point there. Um, from a communication standpoint, um, with the front, I'm talking about the linebackers to the, to the defensive front, um, you know, has for, for losing our signal caller and Daniel Batuli, I thought Henry has done a pretty good job there. You know, lots of times the other team, uh, they'll look at the defense and make checks. Uh, and, and, and we want to, when they check, we want to check. So I feel like Henry's done a nice job doing that. I feel like the play of Matthew Butler and uh, Latrell Bumpus in this past week, Aubrey Solomon, uh, was much improved. Um, you know, so um, in the kicking game, uh, I, I, um, uh, Solansky's done a nice job uh, snapping. I think Paxton Brooks uh, has done a really good job um, placing his punts. I thought this past week was really good. Um, you know, when you, when you look at our kickoff return, um, <clears throat> we're not as good on kickoff returns where we've had double teams at the point of attack. We're not where we need to be there. I thought our back line guys have, have done a really nice job, much better than we've done the last two years uh, operating back there. Kickoff coverage um, has been pretty good. We need better play out of our missiles. Um, you know, and then uh, on the punt team, you know, um, to me there's been a couple of times that really on our zone side, uh, well, we call it being hat short. Uh, one happened Saturday, you know. Guy comes off the edge. Uh, Bumpus has really got that guy in the count, uh, but because somebody um, kind of threw their guy inside, he flashed in front of Bumpus, and it, we got close to getting a punt block. So, uh, and on our punt return, you know, we just we hadn't had a lot of opportunities. Uh, we've not put much pressure on the on the opposing punter this year. Um, and I think in the previous years we've 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 blocked a punt each year. So. Um, you know, we've went back and tried to study and do it with every particular group. What the running backs feel like we're doing good there. Um, what we need to work on this week. We've, we, we've done that with every, every individual group. Uh, so we got something that we can focus on this week. Interceptor against uh, Seattle versus Arizona. If you did see that, 
Is there any chance you might have shown that to your team? I, I did not show it to the team. I, I did see it, though. Uh, somewhere it was um, – I don't know what I saw. It it was a, he was on the goal line. I'm I'm assuming that where he ran the guy on the interception down there. Yeah, no, it's great effort, right? So, um, and that's what to me, um, when you when you look at um, when you look at every team play. To me, are you playing that way every snap? And these are the habits that you create in practice. Um, so. Every day we keep up with the max speeds of every one of our players. It's the first thing that we go over uh, with each individual group. Uh, so, you know, uh, Elijah Simmons, we know that his max speed at 340 pounds is, is 15.8 miles per hour. That's as fast as he can run. So if he's running 11 miles an hour at practice, that ain't good enough. You know, so he's got – and then how long does he sustain that max speed? You know, on the defensive backfield, we've got several guys that run in the 20s and 21s. Where are they at um, at practice or in games, right? So it's a good indication of how they play. Uh, I think as a coach, uh, for us, we can look at the yardages and see and see kind of, you know, are we, are we doing too much, you know, especially at wide receiver. You know, and early in camp, we had to – we had to be careful there because we had so many guys out. You wanted a guy like Josh Palmer. You had to shut him down every day at, at 6,000 yards just because we had other guys out. You didn't want him taking extra reps and be at seven or eight or he'd kind of end up, you know, eventually, you know, having soft tissue injuries. So, um, but, yeah, I think that's a good indication of how, how hard you play. Through five games on the whole, how, how would you assess uh, your pass rush so far? Well, I felt like the first game, um, we've done a really nice job against South Carolina, affected the quarterback. Um, you know, the, the, the next game was a little bit different uh, in terms of changing quarterbacks and how they played and what they did. Um, <clears throat> we must improve there, you know, so – you can be a team that is a pressure team um, where you're bringing um, five, six, or seven guys and, and you put the pressure on the back end of the secondary uh, because if, if you're going to bring those folks, most of the time the quarterback knows it and he can get the ball out of his hand. You look like Saturday, there was lots of times Alabama was protecting with seven- or eight-man protection, right? So um, most of those times we were trying to guard them in the back end. Uh, and, and didn't necessarily do a good job with that all the time. And then there's times that they protected with five and maybe we're rushing four. So uh, we've got to improve there. We've got to improve in the interior D line. Uh, we've got to improve it outside backer. We've got to improve his blitzers from inside backers, uh, secondary guys. Uh, so uh, all the way around, we've got to improve our pass defense uh, affecting the quarterback, whether it's disguises, uh, pass rush, uh, coverage, whatever it is, we must improve.